what happens when you get into states where you open up your chakra? So we won't make it specific to uh, substances because meditation can do that. Breathing can do that. And it's important for you to realize in a certain tense what exactly goes on in your consciousness and even in your physical body when you engage in techniques that actually open the chakras. So obviously we have we have to put this into some kind of perspective. So we'll say in relation to cannabis, some of the do's and don'ts. And then again, you can apply this to anything that you're utilizing or whatever you have going on. Because it'll help you make sure that you keep your system filtered properly. Because remember, it's your responsibility to be your own customs. You have to set up customs at your own ports. Your ports are your chakra centers. Those are actually the processing centers for your consciousness. That's how, that's why uh, food goes through different organs to be processed. Um, vitamins, nutrients, minerals go through different organs to be processed. That's why you can ensure that when you leave here, it, there will be a process that ensues that attempts to filter you. And that's what we talked about, the reincarnation process in order for you to be uh, refined. OK, and then hypersentience, because this is still uh, part of a, a mechanation in a certain tense. It's a process, the reincarnation process. Hypersentience brings you to a point to where you can actually transcend that whole process. This is almost like not eating. So there's no reason for organs to be used to process anything if you're not eating anything. So that, that those are the reference points for hypersentience. Just so this starts to make sense. It's like, well, wait a minute. These are, you know, some people can get confused. They're like, well, if this is the organs, the organs are the archons and archons are, you know, they can get all nuts about it. But realistically, if you look at it in its traditional sense and you see both sides of it, you see that there is a positive and a negative and a neutral behind every planet, behind every organ, et cetera, et cetera. So this is about how to get those formulas correct. So what happens is when you blow open your chakras, however you're doing that, if it just so happens that you're actually in front of an electronic device, what happens is, especially with screens, larger screens, they do throw out a great deal of frequencies. And those frequencies are coming across a certain band. OK, and we discovered this even with working with scalar technology and scalar technology was somewhat of a technological method of trying to heal the body. I only found that it was useful in charging uh, electronics like uh, charging them to a level to where they actually seem to resonate. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but scalar technology was an invention. It's been used for different things, generally in you know more of like laboratories and those kind of things. But I came across a scalar device, and what it used was screens, like your big computer screen at home, and it flashed these symbols that drip down the screen, somewhat like the matrix code. And those symbols, because of their colors and their shapes, threw out frequencies into the room. OK, so this is how you can connect it to science, if you may, or things that are applicably used in advanced technology today. So your screen at, you know, five, whatever, 5000 pixels, 1024 pixels, whatever, has all these frequencies coming off of it. So what happens is if you open your chakras, then you're also going to be exposed to those frequencies and those frequencies work in a specific band. So this is something to be concerned about. It may be a good idea that if you're going to blow open your chakras, however you do it, to m remove yourself from electronic devices that emit a large amount of electronic frequencies. The next thing is, is it's an all time favorite for people to blow open their chakras. And I'm just using it as this type of term. This could be using substances like cannabis, et cetera, and then go play video games. And while it may add and heighten the experience of the game, you may want to use discretion. Now, this is I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying use discretion of how many times you at least do it, because what you're also doing is why that chakra is open. Not only are you getting that frequency, but you're also getting the embed. And we actually uh, discovered this through the process of reference points with chakra opening substances. Reference points are, let's say, for instance, some people are concerned about when is cannabis use harmful. 
And it actually becomes harmful when you have these crummy reference points. This means that you, every time you utilize it, you basically lay back on the couch, you do nothing, or you know, you go and do something that's virtually meaningless. Versus if you utilize it and you go and let's say you're painting, let's say you go into drawing, et cetera, et cetera, what happens is is that it sets these reference points in your consciousness. And the reason why is that when you utilize chakra altering substances, you create a spike. And that spike and that open of the frequency creates a reference point. And so every time that you utilize it, you go back to that reference point. So if you create too many of these crazy reference points, then you kind of permanently embed your mind with these kind of reference points. So that's what you need to be concerned about. The second thing is arguments. Like sometimes we feel like when we get out of one of those crazy quarrels, the best thing to do is go and utilize one of these substances. But the unfortunate part is, is that it only intensifies the thought process, the actual signature in your mind that's causing you to remember what went on. It may dull your consciousness or you may dull your feelings because of the dopamine generally that's being released in the brain, but it does intensify the overall process of how much you're thinking about whatever occurred on a subconscious level. And when you do that, you're basically overexposing yourself to a negative frequency. So be concerned about that. Noisy environments, especially environments that are full of a lot of inorganic noises. And this is because the senses being heightened are somewhat like Superman being dropped into the world at first, not knowing how to control those those centers, those uh, those senses and just being overwhelmed. So you want to be aware of that. You want to not put yourself into very noisy environments. Same thing with uh, heavy workouts. This is another thing. Uh, when you put your body under stress, physical stress, and then your chakras are open, it leaves that reference point. Be aware of that. Um, TV, movies, uh, especially if it's not uh, heightening your consciousness, you know, being aware of that, same thing, frequencies flying everywhere, here you go. Uh, anything over electronics generally, you know, you want to be concerned about that. Now watch, if you take this checklist, because you can write it down when you hear the, you know, the, the uh, archive of the show, you take this checklist, you'll start noticing that if you choose to utilize uh, substances that blow open the chakras, you will see that some, in most cases you're doing some of this. And this is what actually creates the issue. It's not so much the substance itself because it could be a medicine in every tense, but it's actually the improper use. Just like you don't use certain medicines in ways that you know you don't go and put it in your ear. So there could be pro- improper use more so than the substance itself being the culprit to you know what you're de- what's causing uh, are giving you some kind of demise or negative experience. The next thing is also meeting with strangers while you're engaging, you know, and, and that's, it's a major thing because your chakras are open and they're so open. If you're with a stranger and you're engaging with this substance with them, you don't know where their energy is coming from and what's going on with them. You leave yourself susceptible in another realm. Like if you have an active third eye, you can see this rather easy, but for those who don't and, haven't blown open those chakras, they won't know what's going on, but you're actually interfacing with the person. So if it's someone that you don't know, you can make yourself become exposed to things that you later on manifest as something that you don't even know where it came from. Driving, and it's because you're not actually giving the substance the respect that it really deserves. It needs to be put into a space to where you can actually focus on what you're doing so that way you can take it through its complete process. But if you're driving, you're trying to change gears, you're trying to not hit the car in front of you, you know, and the red light and the dude in the traffic, the person honking the horn. So this is leaving reference points of chaos once more. Uh, cell phones, man, cell phones is almost like top of the list. But that's also what a lot of people do the most because they know they get in there, they get in their chakra opening substance and then they start flipping through the phone. And then there they are with this device in their hand, which is where one of the major chakra points are palm of the hand in the center of the bottom of the feet, known as the sole of the foot. Also, those are those are major vortices there. So that's just sucking in all of that because you can't you can't imagine that the energy that's coming off of a phone if you put it on your chest, if you put it on your, your genitals, whatever, that it's not going to damage you because it's got radiation coming off of it. So if you're putting that on you when you also have your chakras open, you can, you know, it's a no brainer. But sometimes, you know, you just have to go through this stuff to, in order to understand what's really happening and why you may not be able to have that breakthrough that you're looking for, especially with your creativity and utilizing the divine feminine properly. The next thing is avoiding acidity. Like, you know, a chicken, 
uh, fried chicken or whatever, you know, right on top of it. You know, sometimes you get the munchies, you go eat the sugar, all these kind of different things. When you when you take the pH of the body and you shift it into an acidic form, that's actually what allows it to get on the band of what most people don't want to experience. This is the energies that are associated with sickness, whether it's mental sickness, physical sickness, etc. It's because of the acidic level of the body. We all know that that's those of us that study the body. But this also affects us differently when we're utilizing in conjunction with the chakras. In addition, avoiding the hive. And what the hive is, is basically the inorganic illusionary structure, sometimes created by electronics, sometimes creating by, by the Wi-Fi, avoiding the hive as much as possible. And like I said, on all this stuff on the list, these are just things that if you can check off more of these when you're engaging, the more, the better. But again, don't get crazy about it because this stuff can become your worst enemy if you start getting crazy about it. But remember, avoiding the hive is a good idea. You know, you may want to go out into nature. If you can get off the grid, get off the grid, you know, turn it into a ceremony and then really start inheriting what it has to really give for you, give to you. The next thing is avoiding negative thoughts. We talked about that early arguments. But if you notice, sometimes the mind, some call that paranoia, it manifests in a different kind of way. It will attempt to start feeding in these negative thoughts into your consciousness. And so and these just kind of come out of nowhere. It's like, you know, just random negative thought. You want to make sure that you're in control of your consciousness to not allow it to drift into negative thoughts when you're utilizing your chakra opening substance. The next thing is, is um, avoiding elect- electrically generated music. Now, the interesting part is many of us played instruments, especially when we were younger. So it may be a good idea to decide to go and jump on Amazon and find an instrument that you like to play. Like even on our site, we have some solfeggio flutes that, you know, a kid can play, you know, and they sound wonderful. You sound like you're a professional playing these things. So it's a good idea to go. And we're going to talk about solutions here in a moment, but it's a good idea to find some naturally generated sound. Go get a trombone, go get a trumpet. You know, if you play clarinet, if you play violin, if you don't learn to, because these organically generated sounds from elements will work wonders for you as far as a frequency level and actually allowing you to not just tune your body, but get in tune with your body. That's why some people can actually play by ear because they're so in tune with natural frequency that they can really uh, understand where that frequency scale is. And when you can do that, you can also in these, you know, in these experiences begin to govern the frequency of your body and change it and morph it, especially for some of the substances that really open the chakras much more uh, in an advanced way, such as ayahuasca and geowasca and diamond tree, etc. The next thing is, is also remember that you can actually balance back out your acidity with uh, on our site. We have a product called the alkalizer. And if you don't have something like that, then you can also use baking soda and, uh, you know, just a, a teaspoon or something. But if you know that you've just engaged in a lot of acid, then you can actually restore your pH by going ahead and getting back on the alkaline level. So just remember, you can actually govern the alkaline and the acidic levels of your body with certain substances, bicarbonates, etc. Some of the do's. Love making. I mean, everyone likes that. It's naturally organic and it actually allows you to generate a very strong pranic force and it kind of keeps you away from the electronics and gets you into something that's different than that. And, you know, there's never anything wrong with something like that unless there's some kind of abuse going on there. And, you know, use your own discretion. Meditation, another great level of setting a reference point for yourself that allows you to return to that reference point every time you choose to engage. And then it becomes somewhat of a habit to where you're always utilizing that reference point. Yoga, it is a little bit intense on the body, but it's a positive level of intense. It's kind of different than working out, like lifting weights and that kind of thing. The yoga often puts you in positions to uh, mature those chakra centers. So uh, nature, obviously, is a great idea because you're able to inherit the grounding of the of the earth and also begin to notice the connection between you and the earth, the geometry, et cetera. Family. I mean, family is, is, is that those aren't strangers. Those are people that you can spend time with, that you can get love with. Obviously, you don't want to start uh, getting into some kind of conflicts or quarrels, but find those right times and spaces to engage with your family. And it's not a bad idea to be more heightened in those scenarios so that you can connect more with them. 
inventing. This is one of my favorite ones. It's like grabbing a pen and paper, go manual, that's what I call it, go manual, and, you know, after you've engaged and start sketching and start drawing and start writing about your experience. That's one of the number one ways to increase your uh, overall productivity and use of uh, the divine feminine. Again, I mentioned writing, drawing, for those who know how to draw and, and go beyond fancy stickmen, and also person to person talking when it's time to connect with that special person in your life or even with your mother, your child. It's not a bad idea if this is a person that's familiar with, that you're familiar with to if you're utilizing that to go and have that conversation with them that will allow you to connect with them more. So that's what I have for you. I mean, today I've, I've done the best to keep the conversation balanced, but also to keep it real because, you know, I'm not here to just tell you what you want to hear. And I'm also not here to just tap dance and entertain you with wild stories of, you know, uh, the other planes, but to give you a good uh, perspective of what's happening in the reality and how that's affecting you. And then also how you can in solutions, because this is not just about, you know, smacking the hand and telling you what you should not do. This is like, hey, if you're going to choose to engage in this, still realize, you know, there, there's a reason why we don't let three year olds jump on this, four year olds jump on this. You know, you don't put a four year old on the ayahuasca, et cetera. And it's because you have to have the maturity. It's a, it's the neophyte, the initiate in the adept. And you need to be that on your own. You don't need a secret society to tell you about that. You don't need some guru to tell you about that. You have to do that on your own because at the end of the day, you're the one that flips the switch.